for being here this early in the in the morning. I'll try to keep you uh, uh, sort of wake you up with a rapid uh, a rapid run through of Mycenaean uh, Mycenaean archaeology. Um, thanks to the organizers for uh, 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 for allowing us to uh, to present this uh, this research. Um, we're very happy that we're presenting this specifically at this CAA. Um, uh, John Lindliff uh, gave his keynote lecture two days ago, in which he explained much about what he did in Boeotia, that in fact he worked also in uh, many other areas in Greece. Uh, and he is one of the people who did uh, foundational work in also the area that we are working with, uh, working in the, uh, the archive plane. So we're very uh, excited, John, for your comments and slightly scared, of course, as well. <laughs> Um, so, for those of you who are uh, unfamiliar with the area and the, uh, and the period, we're talking about the Late Bronze Age in, in Greece. And this is a picture I stole from Wikipedia to give you a general idea of the culture area that we're discussing here. Two important sites are Mycenae and Terence, located in this area of the Peloponnese, uh, which is often considered as the core area of uh, the Mycenaeans. So, why is this interesting and why would anyone research uh, this stuff? Well, it's quite easy. It is bloody spectacular. <laughs> this is, uh, this is a, a picture of, uh, of the uh, citadel of Mycenae. And you can see it has these huge walls. Uh, th there, there are uh, burials in sites with much gold and other spectacular uh, finds. There's a palace right smack on top of this, uh, of this hill. Uh, and it is, it is simply, simply spectacular. Also, the burials from this uh, period, some of them are uh, so awe-inspiring that you have no idea. And this is, this is great not only for archaeology, but also for tourism. So if you're in Greece, visit this stuff. It is spectacular. And we don't only have these fantastic remains. We also know exactly who the people were who built these things. These guys. <laughs> <laughs> you're laughing, but this is King Agamemnon and Achilles. Hero of Mycenae. Um, and why do we know this? Through the epics of Homer. So through literary sources, uh, we know of these people and some of the uh, uh, things that they uh, did. So the, the wars that they went on, etc. Um, we're not the only ones who were inspired by this, who were interested in this. And already in the 19th <coughs> century, uh, archaeological research was, uh, uh, was done in this area by Heinrich Schliemann. Uh, that you uh, must all know probably. This is a picture of Heinrich Simon and his uh, assistant or co-director Dirkveld uh, with some of the laborers. And as uh, many historical uh, people and these uh, larger than life uh, people, we know quite a lot about them and what they did. But to give you a, a nice neo-Marxist uh, uh, idea about uh, <laughs> approach about archaeology, we know so little about the workmen, about the small people. And um, this is not only the case for these historical, these more recent historical periods and Schliemann, but we argue that this is also the case for uh, uh, many parts of Mycenae in Greece and of the archaeology. So this is um, uh, a bird's eye view of the Argive plain, that core area of, uh, of, of the Mycenaeans. And uh, I hope you can see that there's quite a mountainous area. Um, this is the typical Greek uh, landscape, very, uh, very mountainous and many of these high areas quite barren and dry. And uh, here are indicated uh, six important sites or large uh, sites from, uh, from this period in the area. As you can see, they're on the edge of the, uh, of the mountains. And we know quite a lot about these sites. Lots of uh, research has been done uh, uh, into them. But it is the area in between this plain of Argos, the Argive plain, uh, that we know much less about. So, um, this is sort of the, the, the context of our research. Um, and many scholars have uh, claimed that this area is quite particular and that it represents an early form of, of urbanism, to use a, a loaded term. Um, and especially that this area is really dominated by the citadels and the, the citadel uh, uh, sites. Um, and um, this might have been the case. But uh, we, we, find, uh, we are a bit uh, uncomfortable with this uh, uh, idea and we are wondering, sort of, uh, weren't there only smaller settlements and, and, and what's happening in the rural landscape? Um, because there is a strong research bias that we see, many people are really focusing on these citadels. 
and a geomorphological bias, as this plane is an alluvial plane and we expect many sites to perhaps have been buried by, uh, uh, by these sediments and therefore invisible. So, to investigate this, we ask ourselves first, what sites do we know? And we compile the data set of all the known archaeological observations uh, from the area. Um, and we try to ask ourselves, what sites do we not know? So, what are the blank areas on the map? And what is the reason for this? Is this an historical process? There was no one living there? Or this, uh, there are other reasons? This is the base map that you'll see quite a lot. Uh, a DEM of the area uh, which we use to calculate the uh, river flow. It's quite a, uh, a coarse uh, resolution uh, DEM. Using ArcGIS flow accumulation toolset, uh, we calculated the most likely uh, natural uh, route of these, uh, of these rivers. And there are uh, two important uh, features uh, that we have to take into account when thinking of the ancient uh, late Bronze Age landscape. Uh, coastline shift through time throughout the Bronze Age means that sites came, some sites came to lie a bit further away from the coast uh, uh, than they did in the, <coughs> in the earlier history. And there's an area known as Lake Lerna uh, right here, which uh, during the Bronze Age was either mostly swampy and very wet, or indeed partly still uh, an actual lake and uninhabitable. We digitized uh, geological maps from the area, uh, which was a pain in the ass, if you, uh, <laughs> as you can uh, imagine, uh, but it helped us to reconstruct two most important uh, uh, sort of soil uh, features of, of the area. Firstly, indicated by the same DEM uh, uh, raster area here, uh, are the, sort of the, the barren pre-Holocene uh, landscapes, so no later uh, sedimentation is known from this area. And then we have the <coughs> plain area indicated in green, which, uh, uh, of which the, 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 the top soil, the, the, yeah, most of the top of, the, of all these uh, sediments consists of colluvial and alluvial uh, sediments, which are Holocene in date. And so um, they, uh, uh, most of them date from either sort of from Neolithic up to uh, modern times. As you can see quite clearly that uh, uh, these sites I indicated before, these are some uh, important citadel sites, and they are located exactly at the edge of this plain. Um, Tiggins here seems a bit uh, different, but it is located on a rocky outcrop, which, is, uh, which still sticks out from this uh, plain today. Um, we uh, uh, compiled a new data set of all archaeological observations. And these are the most important uh, sources for this. And as I mentioned, John Bintliff's uh, PhD uh, also summarizes a lot of the data from here. Um, and from these literature sources, we, uh, uh, we, many of them overlap, of course. So uh, uh, the, the citadel of Mycenae has been described in many, uh, many different sources. Um, but we uh, uh, created this new data set where we uh, talk about observations on one hand, so those are the individual observations that people have done. Sometimes this is, there is a citadel here, a very large, and in other moments it is three shirts in a field. And then we group them. Uh, uh, some, of, some of these observations uh, appear to have been part of the same original larger settlement. So to avoid uh, confusion, uh, we distinguish these two, these two terms. We have an observation on one hand, uh, and these sites is what we grouped. Um, of course, between these sites, there are large uh, differences. So some sites consist of only one observation, uh, like Dala Manara here, which are indeed a couple of shirts that were found uh, during the construction of a well, and Argos, uh, which we consider to be uh, one large settlement, which consists of burials of uh, a domestic structure, of a, a citadel, etc. So there are uh, um, especially if we, uh, uh, if we look at the differences between these larger centers and uh, smaller domestic sites, uh, the amount of observations uh, for, these, uh, for these larger sites is 17 times uh, higher than, uh, than for smaller domestic sites. Another aspect that uh, we looked into is, the, um, uh, is their um, occurrence through time. So the settlement pattern changes uh, throughout the, the Bronze Age. <coughs> this is a graph of uh, uh, sites of which we have a relatively uh, uh, good date. So not all of them, but it gives you an idea. Uh, and 
Importantly, the Citadel sites uh, are quite stable, so the, the number of uh, Citadel sites is quite stable through time, while the smaller domestic sites, such as villages and farmsteads, constitute the uh, dynamic component of the settlement pattern of the area. Unsurprisingly, this is also related to the uh, duration of habitation of these sites. Um, so this graph is a very simplified view of the, the average uh, uh, duration of, uh, of habitation of these sites, indicated in the amount of subphases in the, in, in the Bronze Age. The take home message is that citadels were inhabited for a very long period and nearly continuous, while domestic sites were inhabited for shorter periods usually. So, um, the uh, data sets that we uh, acquired are quite uh, different from each other, and there are four, we, we discern four different manners in which uh, uh, observations have been done. To start uh, here, modern construction and rescue archaeology has uh, yielded a lot of new data, mostly in urban areas of Argos and Nafplion. Some sites are visible above ground, so uh, some of these citadels have huge walls that you simply cannot miss, and we consider that this is uh, the, the, the primary reason that they were originally discovered. And then there are also uh, many observations that may not actually stick out on the ground, but they are or, uh, either within these, uh, these citadels, or they are in such direct proximity of them that we consider that they have been, uh, uh, have been recognized because of this. And then there is a fourth uh, category, and that is uh, sites that have been found through survey. Two important intensive survey uh, projects have been carried out here. So this cluster here is the Mycenae <coughs> survey and the Berbati Lindes uh, survey, which will be an important one for later on. So keep that in mind. And then through extensive survey work, uh, we have uh, quite a number of sites that are really spread out over the landscape. Um, but this is, was indeed an extensive uh, uh, survey work. So, um, to summarize, uh, many of these citadels you simply cannot miss. Uh, and of course, these are very uh, inspiring and many people would like to investigate these and, and uh, the archaeological remains are quite, uh, uh, quite spectacular, so you'd want to. But we recognize that there is a, a, a bias both in the research focus and the attention that has gotten uh, and in the visibility directly in the plane. So this is uh, one of the main reasons that, uh, uh, that we know many of these, uh, uh, these sites. But why are some areas, and in particular the central plane, completely empty? We know five uh, observations, five sites. This is Lerna Mili. Uh, they are on the very edge. They are within the, those uh, uh, alluvial uh, sediments, but uh, they are uh, in such sort of uh, shallow <coughs> deposits that, that they were easily identified as uh, archaeological sites and excavated. Magola is a bit of a mystery to us, to be very honest. Uh, it's hard to locate it nowadays, uh, but it's been reported to be a, a, a tell like site. Uh, so perhaps this was on top of a rocky outcrop or, or something. Um, then there's Dalamanara, which, as I mentioned before, is just a couple of shirts that were found mm. during the construction of a well. And Ghania is uh, a small uh, domestic settlement that which was found during the construction of uh, a highway in this area. It consists of a couple of uh, domestic structures, storage facilities, and it is uh, uh, located along the ancient road between uh, Mycenae and, and Argos. Um, to understand better the, um, uh, the geomorphological context there, Eberhard Sanger uh, put out some corings, and these are the, the, the the soil profiles that he uh, reconstructed on the basis of them. And to have a uh, closer look at one of them, uh, the longest soil profile he created from the coast on this side towards Argos, we see a, a continuous deposition of colluvial and alluvial sediments from the early Bronze Age on until modern times. Well, well this is very interesting uh, in itself. He also looked at some soil profiles in uh, pits that were dug for, um, uh, for road construction, etc. And he reconstructed approximately this area here um, to, have been, to be covered with at least one meter of, uh, of sediment since, uh, uh, since the Bronze Age. So these are covering that uh, Bronze Age landscape. Obviously, when we plot our uh, sites on top of it, this, this area 
which is conspicuously empty of, uh, of site. And we believe that this is indeed uh, probably caused by uh, the sedimentation. They are simply invisible. To quickly compare with some other areas, there are four survey areas that we'd like to focus on. Nemea and Barbati in the north, and Pilos and Laconia in the south. So roughly same periods, uh, same culture period as it were. Um, we notice that the uh, site distribution is quite spread out uh, and is not so focused on, on central sites. Um, and that is, uh, as that is one aspect of, their, of the settlement pattern, um, they are also characterized by a single major site and many more uh, varying in size uh, uh, other domestic uh, settlements. This is contrasted with the archive plane, where uh, in the same type of pie chart here, we have many more of these centers, uh, and we are definitely lacking a large part of the, um, uh, of the domestic settlements, the rural settlements that we see uh, elsewhere. Um, and in fact, many of, these, um, uh, many of these settlements are actually found in the survey uh, of uh, Berbati that I'll get back to. So, large focus on these citadels. This is why we get uh, most archaeological information and this is where most research has really uh, focused on. And when this is a zoom in on the Berbati Valley, uh, an area which is similar in geomorphological uh, makeup as the, as the archive plane itself, uh, when it was surveyed, they found that indeed many uh, small domestic sites, uh, rural uh, uh, rural sites uh, could be identified and uh, looking at the date ranges of these uh, settlements uh, there seems to be a pattern that towards the apex of Mycenaean uh, occupation of the area more and more settlements uh, were constructed even in areas which were beyond the uh, prime agricult uh, agricultural lands indicating that the agricultural lands were probably largely uh, occupied for a large part. So. Our suggestion is uh, to, rather than focus on these, on these sites and consider this completely different landscape from other similar Mycenaean uh, sites, um, that uh, uh, there are many sites that were missing, those, especially those small rural uh, settlements, and that rather than assuming that they were not there, that uh, these, um, uh, uh, these are in, in fact invisible to, uh, uh, to us archaeologically, <coughs> And that as population increased uh, throughout the Bronze Age, we're not talking about an urbanization of this landscape, but in fact, during, uh, uh, due to an intensified agricultural program, we're talking about an effective ruralization of the Argive Plain. And with this uh, uh, hypothesis, uh, and with due thanks to uh, the ERC for funding this project uh, at Leiden University, uh, that, that we are in, the Set in Stone project led by uh, Dr. Anne Briespaard. Um, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.